Right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, I'm going to be giving you an update of my propagation box today. This is three months since my last video on the propagation box, so a lot of it has grown. I haven't checked it in two weeks because I added some new cuttings to it two weeks ago. Since then I haven't checked it, so we're going to open it up together and have a look. Um, I've taken a couple of things out of it. The only things I've taken out of it, I believe, have been one chlorophytum. I added more chlorophytum. I took out the petunias and that sort of like all the outdoor plants I took out because I just didn't want them in there anymore. Um, the ivy I took out as well. So as far as I'm aware, it's the majority begonias, hoyas, chlorophytums. Yeah, I can't remember what else is in there. So we'll have a look together. Um, this is probably going to be quite a quick video, but I want to update you guys. Oh, this, there's a philodendron has started in there as well. Anyway, let's get, um, I'll turn the camera around and show you the box um, and then we can open it up and have a look. Right, so this is just a plastic container, like that you just, for, like storage containers, it's just a see-through container, obviously. <laughs> Um, I haven't put any holes in it. I was thinking of adding some holes across the top because it is getting, it's like so humid in there that when I take stuff out, it kind of really has a bit of a shock to the system. Um, but here we are. Everything's actually looking really good at, like at the first glance. I'll just chuck that on the floor. Um, this is on my bed, so if it is a little bit shaky, that'll be why. So as you can see, it's really full. Uh, I'm trying to think of what's been in there the longest. This um, begonia here, which is Sumatra green, that has been in there for a really long time. That was, yeah, one of the first things I took. Um, the Fetonias here, the um, um, mosaic skeletons, these were propagations from the lovely uh, Fetonia that Laura sent me. What else we got? We've got my begonia... Um, Actually, I'll give you, you can see the quick overview now, and then I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and show you a closer up to each plant so that I can give you a proper detailed look. Right, yeah, this is a lot better. So the Sumatra green there, as you can see, like this is one of the downsides kind of to sphagnum moss, using sphagnum moss as a medium. So this is the majority sphagnum moss mixed with a little bit of soil and then terracotta pieces, etc., um, and bark. But you see how this is like really pale and it's not as green as it's supposed to be because I have the adult plant just here and you can see how dark green those leaves are. So that is the lack of nutrients and because obviously the sphagnum moss doesn't release nutrients as such unless it's breaking down. But this, um, I haven't been fertilizing so you can just see that it's really quite yellow. So best I get this out here soon but the problem I'm facing is because the humidity in here is so high if I take it out I really do think they're just going to crisp up in a matter like in a day so I'm gonna figure something out but they need to come out um the begonia uh, breakdance these are actually growing so well so these were just obviously just leaf cuttings and you can see like all and basically everything you see is new new leaves so like this new leaf New leaves, new leaves down here, looking really nice and healthy. And I hope Laura is proud of me because this is my first time propagating them. And these are all doing really well. Oh, this one's, yeah, that one. no, it's doing fine. Uh, yeah, it's just the, no, is that rotting there? No, I think it's just wonky. Yeah, so they're doing really well. Then we've got some Hoya gracilis, or there's another name for the Hoya gracilis. I can't, it's not coming to me right now. What was it? Uh, I, know, I can't remember, but Hoya gracilis here, that's just a cutting and it's rooted along the entire stem. Um, I've got a Hoya crinkle 8 just there. What else have we got? We've got another, oh, this is another Begonia um, Sumatra green, but this one obviously has not developed as quick. Wait, is that Sumatra green? I don't know. I think it is because I'm sure they're the only ones I did propagate. Yeah, I think so. Right, over here, these are the most recent additions and actually they've already rooted. Whoa. So, wow. I literally added those two. Oh, I, 
it must have been two weeks ago now, but I feel like it wasn't that long. And you look, you can see, you can just see the roots going through here. Um, Hoya polynuras. Oh, there's a bug on there. Oh, there's some bugs. Can you see them? Yeah, you can. Oh, I don't know what they are. Hopefully not bad. I mean, nothing looks terrible in here. Nothing looks like it's got pest damage. Oh, interesting. Okay, if you know what they are, let me know. <laughs> but these are all rooted really, not really good, actually. I'm so shocked by that. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four. Oh, five, six. And have these ones? Yeah, these ones are rooted too. Look, I can generally pull this out. So this has been in, in here for two weeks. And it, oops, is covered in roots. And that is, let's get that back in there. Try and cover that root up. So that is wicked. Um, what else did I add? Well, let's go for it. Right, we've got loads of Serapegia, Woody Eye, Varigatas, like, just throughout. And that was, yeah, through there as well. That was just leftover cuttings from when I did the propagation video on the Serapegia. Uh, there's another Crinkle 8 over here, which is, the, they've all rooted, they've been in here for ages, these ones. So I can take those out soon. I believe this is another Sumatra Green, but it looks very different. But I don't believe I propagated any of ones. Uh, I don't know. It looks, oh, this leaf looks kind of similar, right? <laughs> Not really. But yeah, I believe that's another Sumatra Green. Another um, breakdance here. And you can see its new leaves coming up. They've propagated so nicely. I'm really happy with those. And this one here as well. He's got some new leaves coming up. Um, so this has worked really well. Oh, the Philodendron Hestatum. I mean, it's done good. It did have some older leaves down here, but they did die off. They, they rotted, which is, again, another problem with the the high humidity. It really does. When fungus gets in, if fungus go into this entire thing, it could quite easily just wipe it out, like if it had botrytis or something. Um, so I need to keep an eye on that. And again, that's another reason as to why I want to kind of increase the airflow. So I think for now, I might just kind of leave the lid on a jar rather than sealing it on just to see how it goes. Oh, and then we've got some of the um, chlorophytums. These have all rooted. Well, there's only one there and one tiny one here. And this tiny one looks like it's gonna rot. It just doesn't look the best. You can kind of see that it's not doing great. Um, I think that's everything. There was a Deschidia in here, I think. Is this it down here? Yes, the Deschidia is alive. <laughs> so the Deschidia is in here with the it's like hiding under here. Um, this was a gift from Megan, aka Carnivorous Plant Girl. Um, there was another one, but the variegated one died off. But I'm glad that one's rooted, and I'm sure she'll be happy. Ah, oh, look, you see, mold. Let me get that out right right away. Get rid. Yeah. So any mold, I just really want to get rid of. But that, all these Fetonias are doing so good. You see the roots growing up the side where it's just so humid as well. But yeah, the Fetonias are looking amazing. And I'm probably going to propagate more of those because I really want to create like a nice big display of them. Um, yeah, so that's basically everything. Like a lot of this is ready to come out, but I'm probably just not going to do that just yet. But look how incredible this all... Oh, the Marmaduke. I've got a Marmaduke down here. This I added only recently. I think I added it at the same time that I added the Hoya polynuras. Um, and from lots of experience growing leaf cuttings of begonias i find they always take about three weeks to root like the leaf will take was it no it starts it starts rooting after a week or two but it won't it don't even sh send up any new leaves until after three weeks for me personally i don't know if anyone has experienced differently but yeah these are doing so good and these are clearly like They've been shooting up leaves for a long time because we've actually got some decent sized leaves and we've got some lovely coloration on these ones too. So this one's beautiful. Yeah, so I think that's probably it for this video. I just wanted to show you this one, um, this propagation box. And I'm so happy with all of this. Um, yeah, because just up here, this is where I have my adult polynura and um, it's really big, it's lovely. It has threatened to flower a few times, but it just hasn't really ever come to anything. We've got some beautiful sunshine outside right now. Um, so yeah, I just, I've just been cutting the ends off and propagating the ends. 
and it's sending out a lot of new growth up at the top. So I want to plant more in the top so I get a fuller plant. And then here is my lovely um, Hoya Crimson Princess. And that's definitely one of my favorites. Um, yeah, and loads of mess in the back. But as far as this video goes, this is doing really well. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try and take some of this out slowly. Um, not in this video, but I'll slowly start to move stuff out of here to make more space for more propagation. Um, because this has been so successful and yeah if you guys haven't tried something like this i would highly recommend it because you can just close the lid leave it for weeks you don't have to water it i've never watered this since setting it up have never watered it and that's been four months now so um it's just so self-sufficient self-sustaining sorry and um one thing i would do well i want i wouldn't do it well i could i could do it is um start fertilizing just so that because everything has rooted it will give everything that bit of boost such as the Sumatra green like it'll it'll allow it to flourish a bit more um because if i do leave that in here for a lot longer it's going to start declining just because there's not enough nutrients in this medium but yeah um i definitely consider maybe i can spot feed it i can mix up a little bit of baby bio um and just water directly down here just an, a really small bit just to give it that little boost but that's the only thing i'd really change about this so yeah yeah so that is my propagation box for now um i do have a second one but it's not got propagations in it um i'm considering using it to do more propagations because at the moment it's just got some pings in it pinguiculars um butterworts and some cephalotus in there as well and i can't think of what else is in there but I'm thinking of changing that into a propagation box too because I just love propagating, can't get enough of it. Um, yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys have tried this method at home. I know a lot of you have. Um, a lot of people I watch on here have also done it. Um, and I think that's why I did it as well because I saw Emma do it um, and Laura, uh, loads of people, loads, like everyone on YouTube does it and it's because it works really well. So um i hope you guys enjoyed if you did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe to see more and i'll see you guys in my next video